Welcome to the News in Motion podcast. Over the next several months leading up to the midterm elections, Gail will focus most of her podcasts on equipping and educating voters and encouraging people to register to vote. Gail is also available to serve as a community speaker on voting and civic engagement. If you are interested in working with her, email Gail at newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com to schedule her today. If you're a candidate and would like to join Gail for a segment or submit your advertisement to be aired for a fee, email newsinmotionwithgail at gmail.com. Now for today's podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the News in Motion podcast. We are at season four. If you're listening on the day it releases, it is Friday, September the 9th, 2022. And I'm so excited to kick off this season with Dr. Charles W. Ferguson. He is a senior pastor of Clare United Methodist Church in Columbus, Ohio. He is married to Marissa K. Ferguson. I like those middle names in there and proud father of Charles J. Ferguson. Y'all, he has a website that I'll give to you now and I'll also share at the end, which is www.drcharleswferguson.org. He also has Facebook and Instagram handles, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But I'm just so excited to invite him to this show. I know y'all have been missing me. I've been missing you all as well, but here we are, we are back at it. I must tell all of you that it is great when you're able to take a vacation and having the whole entire month of August has been absolutely fabulous. Every now and then you have to listen to your body. And I was getting to that place with all of this news and these political platforms and bringing the truth when it comes to Medicare, Medicaid and advocacy that I found myself about to hit the wall. But I knew I needed to breathe and take a step back. And I was not afraid. There are many people who asked me Um, Was I concerned that my algorithm on the digital platform would would plummet? I really didn't care. Those who want to find me or want to see what's going on, they will find us back here. Um, Y'all know News in Motion is Monday through Thursday at 7.25 a.m. Eastern Time. And we are on Facebook, my YouTube, and also LinkedIn. And you can always watch the replay. But there's something about when you join us live. We have a party. Let me tell you, we have a party. Uh, We have started back as well on News in Motion. We started back on Wednesday, September the 7th, and we are focused on uh, leading up to the midterm elections. And my guest today, uh, Dr. Charles Ferguson, he's one of our authors, um, our freelance authors for Ready Publication. You all know that I have Ready Publication alongside my daughter as well. And this issue is dedicated to the midterm elections. Um, It's also dealing with advocacy, is giving you information that you may not find anywhere else. We have some power hitters on um, this particular issue. This is a special issue of Ready called Ready to Vote. It is called Ready to Vote. And it's dealing with people, politics, and our democracy. So I'm so excited to have Dr. Ferguson with us. So come on in here, Dr. Ferguson. What's up? Hey, what's cracking? How you doing? <laughs> it's all about you today. It's all about you. <laughs> Let I mean, me tell you. <laughs> you know how ner- you know how nervous I am about anything being about me. So. Listen, don't be nervous because your article. Oh, I'm gonna just. Oh, it's amazing. Even the editor, uh, the editor Carrie Kuba out of Oregon, she said, "My word, that article is just unbelievable." She oh, kept wow. rant, ranting and raving about it. And I said, Carrie, he has a book. And then I know she went to uh, Amazon and purchased the book. She says, Why, where have you been hiding him? I said, I haven't been hiding him anywhere. <laughs> 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 I said, he's on my Facebook wall. So she's probably already friended you and everything else on Facebook. But she was just talking about it. So I want you to jump in. Tell everyone the title of your article. And, and let the audience know why you went this direction. Uh, for this particular piece? Um, The article is entitled um, Recapturing Our Ubuntu. Um, I was sitting with this for a while and just for transparency purposes, um, I know that um, you sent me the email a long time ago and I said yes. And then life just happened. I mean, Anything and everything that could possibly happen happened. 
And by the time the original deadline um, passed, I was like, man, I, I missed the boat. And then I get an email saying, uh, you didn't. I need it by then. I was like, oh, well, in that case, <laughs> <laughs> we're able to kind of push this out. But the but the main reason I went this route, um, I've been dealing I've been I've been I've become a part of a lot of different things um, in regards to advocacy. Um, shout out to my friend and my brother, Derek Holmes, who kind of. I, I said I said it to him once. I said you kind of hooked me in when I didn't expect it, and now I'm like really full throttle, and in a lot of ways. And I started really thinking about what it means to be an advocate. Um, okay. What it really means, and you know, my faith informs it. Um, being a pastor informs it. Being in the community informs it. And one of the things that I came to a realization about is that we we have lost a sense of what Ubuntu means, the concept, the philosophy behind it. You know, I am because you are. I am because we are. It's our humanity towards one another. And at the root of that is the fact that if you're not well, then I'm not well. Um, if you're not okay, I'm not okay. So we have lost a great sense of that, regardless of if you're a part of the African-American community, just humanity, period. We have lost a great sense of that. And so taking that foundation, understanding um, just from my own faith journey, my own personal journey, and even coming to an unusual revelation about advocacy being along the lines of intercession, um, sometimes people can't speak for themselves. Sometimes people are so down, you know, they're so heavy with everything. They can't speak to the things that they're going through. So who talks for the strong person, you know, who talks for the person that's going through hell and high water and you know it, um, who speaks to Pharaoh when others can't. So this is a very significant time that has unveiled how important it is and at the same time how much of it really lacks that's interesting you say that because even in the article you say there's a line in here and i want all of you all to get ready publication it releases um mid-september towards the end of september um, although it's coming out for the midterm elections, there's going to be so many articles and resources included that it's not a magazine that's going to expire. This issue will not have an expiration date. You say on here, many people are struggling to find their place in this world of constant turmoil. That one hit me. Can you speak to that, please? I think the, I think the hardest thing in the world is when you have people that know they have purpose, they know they have all types of different things that can enhance the world. But when you look out and you look out into the world and you see people constantly going through stuff, you see the weight of, I mean, the news cycle. It's not that I don't watch the news. I know I'm going to catch the news eventually because it has become so heavy with so much stuff. And you're like, where... Where do I fit in in on this? I mean, even as even as a leader in the life of the church, coming through a prophetic tradition, I've had to sit back and ask myself, where do I fall in this? Because, you know, I used to say I used to say it like this. There was there's a um, there's a conversation that happened between a news reporter and Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman, for those that don't know who he is, he was a Black preacher. Well, in our tradition, we would even call him a mystic because of the way that he approached his theology. Matter of fact, he didn't call himself a Christian. He called himself a follower of the religion of Jesus. That's how deep he was. And one day they asked him, um, during the civil rights movement, they asked him, why wasn't he out like with King and with everybody else and all that kind of stuff. And to a certain extent, he said, because I kind of know my place, you know, that my place is not in front. 
And the funny thing is, though he was never in front, King read Thurman while he was on the road to root and ground him spiritually to do the things that he did. So everybody has a place. And sometimes we don't always know what that place is because we think it's either not significant enough or we have to be out in front in order to make an impact. When the truth is, all you need to do is be yourself. And you have to have the confidence to be able to know that you have a place in a time of turmoil. It's not when everything's good, it's when everything's going. Basically, I wrote it in here. You know, the question really was, what the hell is going on? And, and it was a great question. <laughs> <laughs> if I can say so myself. And th I think that's what really spoke to me and to Carrie, the editor of this piece. There was something else you were talking about advocacy. I want to pick that up too. You mm -hmm. said advocacy is defined as an action that speaks in favor, uh, recommends, argues for a cause, supports or defends, or pleads on the behalf of others. And then you go on to say, we live in a society that requires voices to speak for the voiceless. But if I can ask you this question, even those of us who have a voice and we can speak for the voiceless, you know, I'm an advocate as you are an advocate. You talked about our good friend, Derek, uh, Pastor Derek Holmes is also an advocate. And we're out here on the ground. We're like boots on the ground going. But there are some of the voiceless who would rather us with voices stay silent. Where do you think that stems from? <sighs> See, let me <laughs> okay so no go for it this is this is look this is a real and raw podcast go for it <laughs> all right well here we go so I'll, I'll use from my life um before now i used to pastor two churches and both churches had very different personalities I had plenty of people in one place, supported their pastor, all that kind of stuff, the things I was about, so on and so forth, individually, but not always as a collective. When you bring up doing things for the malign, the malign in one context looked like this small group. The idea of we're doing this for this group right here, even though they need it or we're trying to impose upon them what it is that they need to get because they're in need and we think we know their need. But when you really identify the real needs, that's the other place where I currently serve. You identify the real needs, not because of what you see, but because of what folk tell you is different. There are people that are voiceless on purpose. They're not voiceless. Actually, they're not voiceless. They are silent. And those people that are silent are complicit in continuing the um, basically keeping the oppressed oppressed. You said complicit. You gotta you gotta break that down because because that is when you just said that my spirit went. That's it. Complicit. Mm -hmm. Break that down for those who are listening because I know there are people tuned in and I know if you're driving your car, you need to still stay pay attention to the road signs and the lights and everything because this is about to go deep. So come on, Dr. Ferguson, break down for the people who need to know complicit. Even if I'm a I'm a known introvert and people think that introvert means that you're silent. That's not true. It just means that you don't. It means a few things. One, you just don't put up with a whole lot of mess. You don't talk to folk. that are always going to be telling you a bunch of dumb stuff. No, I ain't got time for that. I live with one of those. But go ahead. <laughs> shout out. Shout out to your husband. Who at one time at one time was my youth minister. That's my guy. <laughs> so, so that's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. Uh, so I'm a known introvert, but if people sit with me long enough, they know what matters to me. People being free matters to me. You sitting by knowing that folk are in, in bondage and you won't speak to it or you will not do anything towards the liberation of your people, you are complicit. Let's go further back because everybody thinks that black history started with slavery. Stop. Go back to the motherland. <laughs> when you go back to the motherland and you go back to all the stuff and the colonization of Africa and everything else, the only way you could colonize that large of a continent 
is not because is not just because of folk that went in and fought. The culture teaches us that nobody could come in unless you let them. No enemy could come in unless you let them because we were tribal. <laughs> and when we were tribal, nobody could come in unless they were going to take an L. And now we've discovered that we have people back then who were complicit in selling out their own. How did they do it? Because they took a few trinkets here and there and they sold out their own. Fast forward to the United States of America in 2022. Every time you are silent about things that are hurting folk that look like you, come from where you are, all that kind of stuff, I don't care if you made it and others have it. I got friends, we came from the same stuff, and they say I've made it and some of them are still going through hell and high water. That's fine. But if they came to me today, I would still say, hey, man, let me show you what freedom looks like. Let me show you what liberation looks like. But if we don't do that, because nobody else is going to do it, if we don't do that, we're just as complicit as the systems and everything else that have already been set up to try to defeat us. Wow. Wow. So that, that leads me right into another sentence I want to pull. That's powerful. Uh, where you say, if we are honest, most people, uh, most people do not see the payoff associated with defending others. Now, the reason why that really touched me when I was going through your article is because so many people think they need to get something for helping somebody else or to defend them. There are times that I defend people, if we want to call it defending them, and they don't even know I've, I've, I've defended them. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have a responsibility, <laughs> excuse me, even when we go into closed doors, if somebody's name come up, we have a responsibility to defend. And, and what that may look like with each person, I think, is different. I think we have a, a responsibility not to throw them under the bus. Right. Even if we don't see eye to eye or even if we don't, agree with some of the things that they have been doing or not doing. And we may not even have names or faces. It could be, well, this zip code is doing X. I think our responsibility is to say, well, is that true? Or where does that come from? Or what can we do to build them up? Instead of jumping on the bandwagon and saying, yeah, they're just a bunch of slums. They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that hurts us as a community. Um, and I hear it a lot. I go into some meetings, even Zooms. Now, i got to be honest with you, Dr. Ferguson. There are Zoom meetings that I just go ahead and turn my video off because yes. I'm appalled as, at what is being said. And people are looking for a payoff. I want you to speak to that because I'm not sure that's what we should be looking for. So let's define what a real payoff is in context to liberation. I think that's a good place to start. Liberation. Well, let me back up. I preached a sermon maybe about two weeks ago. And I talked about, and it's a part of a larger series that, I, that I've completed as of this Sunday. Um, the series was called, We're Crossing Over Into the Promised Land. And I focused in Joshua. And two weeks ago, I talked about, we are not our ancestors. And what I mentioned was, when you look at the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt into the wilderness and they were on the verge of the promise, um, the original um, spies that went in, if you look at the if you look at the map, they didn't enter through the Jordan. They entered through the south where there were no obstructions and they walked in. They were able to take stuff out. God covered them as foreigners in a land where they should have been stomped out in a land full of giants. They get to a meeting and they sit around and they and they should be, let's go on in, take the land. We already got what we need. But 10 of those spies all of a sudden said, no, because we see ourselves as grasshoppers in their eyes. Not because the giants said it. People don't read their Bibles close enough. They said, we see ourselves even though they had all this stuff, God protected them and everything. They had everything in their hands. All they had to do was walk in. 
a whole generation had to die for the next generation to go in. Now, here's the key. That previous generation took the word of 10 people that had personal issues and said they were cool enough with freedom from being enslaved, but they were not good. They didn't feel they were good enough to be liberated to have everything that was promised. You had a whole nother generation that was free. Let's be clear. They were free, but they didn't want to settle for being in the wilderness no more. Here we are. There are people that are cool with being free, but not being liberated. They just want to be free enough to roam around the mountain. And there are other people that said, no, there's more to be had. We can't just say that we have equality when we know we don't have equity. There it is. We can't just say that now because of affirmative action, I can get at least in the pool and then I can probably get the job because they got to meet a quota. No, I want to own the firm and hire who I want to make that firm better because I have an opportunity to not only lift myself, but to lift others. That's a different mentality. So and you, have- you, have, you have that line, not to cut you off. I want to jump on here. Cause I was like, wait a minute, I read that in your, in your piece. You say people have dismissed the hope of possibly experiencing equality and equity in their day. And that speaks to what you were just saying. Um, and I think for people, I think, no, I'm going to be honest. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I started off this this podcast for um, this Friday, again, this is the one that's releasing on September the 9th. And if you're tuning in today, great. Thank you for tuning in to our, um, our season four. This is the first uh, podcast for season four. But I took that time because I was tired. I mm-hmm. was tired because many people know that my mom has been very ill, um, homebound, bedridden. My dad's gotten sick in the middle of it. So I'm trying to balance that Medicare. They they own their home. So Medicare stopped paying for my mom's rehab to stay in the in the in the rehabilitation center. Um, because they're like, Well, you own your home, you can afford it. The system doesn't work. No, right. no, let me change it. The system works. But it is not working for us. Right, right, we have right. To figure out how to navigate the system. But even with that, so so you're balancing Medicare. People don't, don't even know that you can do a second appeal after the first appeal has been ended. But from my research and digging, because I knew it just couldn't end there, I'm like, oh, you can appeal it an appeal. So then going navigating through that. And then um, fighting, if you will, with the with the social workers and the doctors and the physicians and the therapists and the physical therapists and so forth and so on. Then on another end, you have where you're I'm fighting the, the system with my dad in the hospital when they think because of a zip code, oh, he doesn't have any insurance. But then I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's, let's start all over here. And then when they realized, oh, he does have insurance, they started treating him differently. Well, then I went into the mindset of, no, I need to fight for all my other brothers and sisters who are in here are being treated as if they don't have insurance because there's no one here advocating for them. So then you compound that with, let me get people registered to vote. Let me help them ed- educate them as to why voting is important. Let me get out here and be a part of civic engagement. It's like, oh my gosh, back to the payoff. Where's the payoff? Mm, Shouldn't be looking for a payoff, but I'm drained. I'm tired. Where's the equality and the equity? And it just keeps going and going and going where I knew my mental health, my my self-health, my physical health, my spiritual health, my health, whatever. Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. But then in August, we know all the stuff that, that hit off in August Well, are they going to arrest them? Aren't they going to arrest them? If I did it, would I be in jail already? Will we still be having a conversation around it? Mm -hmm. The disparities, the the oppression, the the marginalized, we're tired. And I think that's why your piece spoke to me. Um, uh, You you buto, I am because you are, I hope I said that right. I am because we are humanity towards others. But Dr. Ferguson, we tired. Yeah. And let me let me say two quick things before the next thing that's on my brain. First of all, we allowed to be tired. And then second thing, if you're not tired, you ain't doing nothing. 
There's that. <laughs> so so let, let, let's start off with that. Um, there are people, there are people that are fatigued by the news and by being just inundated with images. I get that. But what happens when you take the step, just one, to do something different to try to influence that environment? And then what happens when you actually do that and people watch and they say, man, we we right there behind you. And they don't realize, I don't need you behind me. <laughs> I actually need you beside me. And being beside me doesn't necessarily mean being front line. It means using what you have to bring support. Okay. I'm a pastor of a church. I've been February. It'll be 25 years. I've been in ministry in February and I'm 41 years old. Just turned 41 on Friday and on August, on August 26th. Um, I, I've been doing this a minute and I've had to hear people talk crazy about what they think ministry is. And the older I've become, the more I've just been like, you know what? We're on the verge of, it's going to be one of two things. Either you're going to get cussed out or I'm just going to just not listen to you. That part. <laughs> yeah. Because I've had too many people try to tell me what ministry looks like. And these are the same people. Watch this. Same people that when you ask them to do things, let's start with the church. Just inside the walls. They acted real hesitant. And then if you know they ain't going to do it behind the walls, what makes you think they're going to do anything outside of that? And don't let me go into the fact that some of these people are a part of organizations that they decide to be a part of and they are active because they pay their dues, but they ain't really active in those things either because they just want to have clout. Did I say something? I did. Clout chasers want to be around the thing. Real folk don't, real folk that want real change don't need clout. We don't need that it. Part. We don't that need part. it. I mean, I, I mean, when I when I get in, when people introduce me to folk, I literally will cut them off and be like, Charles, good to meet you. I don't even want them to know I got four degrees and this, that, and the other. I don't want them to know. I don't, yeah. want, them, I don't want them to know I wrote a book, anything else, because I want to find out are they serious about anything? And if they are serious about anything, then we could talk about what tools I have, what tools they have, and let's get this thing cracked. But other than yeah. that, we the the payoff in this season may not be the payoff may not be the immediate change of a thing. The payoff might be the payoff we might need to look for is the change of mentality of people to make a difference. Mm. That may be the thing we need to see because if more people say, you know what? I can't sit on the sideline no more. I know I have something. I don't know how to use it, but I know people that are doing things let me connect with them. Have them teach me and train me how to do it. Have them engage me in showing how this thing works and that thing works and mm -hmm. why it's necessary. I literally remember Derek saying to me, your voice is necessary. And I sat in a seat and I said, I don't know how that's going to work because you do this on a regular basis. And here's where I am. Mm -hmm. Fast forward. I've now be, I was a part of doing stuff around the um, teacher strike. Uh, a few and other that's things. Columbus, just, Ohio, right? The, yeah, in Columbus, uh, Columbus right. City Schools, right? Yeah. Um, that that was the first time they they did a strike in what over forty years, right? Yeah. It was yeah, close to yeah. fifty. You you're talking about, and then let's just be clear: the reason that we have this highlight on advocacy in a way that we've never had that I won't say never had it, but in a way that has never been this pronounced. Mm -hmm. I I believe if there was any good thing that happened because of COVID, it was this. Because now you got to see what you can't cover up. Right, right. We had to sit down and see stuff that you can't cover up anymore. You can't cover up, you can't cover up bad policing. You can't cover up um, racism, sexism, all the isms and schisms. You can't cover up all that stuff no more. You got to deal with it. You can't cover up that 
you know, people get into positions to corrupt the system further to try to take things back 50 and 60 and 100 years. OK, yeah. you, can't, you can't do that. So now what are you going to do when in the words of in the words of legal terminology, when people go through a divorce, when you have become accustomed to a certain lifestyle, when folk are trying to take that thing from you, what right. are you going to do? And if you're not going to do anything then does it really matter to you? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I can't remember which police, um, I want to say it's Arizona, but don't quote me on that, where they've implemented a law now that you have to be so far away from the police for filming. Um, so they're now even backing us up from that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, you know, once a precedent has been set, it trickles down and across through other states. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the fact that you even have to put that law in place is scary because that means, you know, you're doing something wrong. If you want us to back up, Mm -hmm. I understand you need room to do your job, but you're taking us so far that we can't even get the lens on that. So hopefully iPhone or Samsung or somebody will do a kind of video on their phone that will bring them all the way in if they're 20 feet from, from afar to, to capture that. Well, yeah. Yeah. My, there you go. My, my iPhone 13 pro. Max. Let's be clear. Right. Right. There's so much, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning, um, allergies that are beating me up today. <clears throat> excuse me. There's so much that we can talk about yeah. in the short time that we have. But I want to share a transparent moment about something um, you were saying there. Because as you were talking, even in the beginning, with this being the uh, comeback season four, um, been off for over a month, um, it hit me. Like a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, um, Molly, who's put together my website, she's out of um, Texas and um, she helps with my graphics and things like that. She said to me, listen, your girlfriend, she says, um, she says, uh, you're comfortable in your advocacy and, and your politics and your voter education. She said, that's your spot. She said, the reason you've been fluctuating with ministry and everything else is because, yeah, you're a believer and yeah, you know Jesus and yes, you do ministry, but you were looking at doing women's ministry. She said, which has served this purpose for the time it did. She goes, but you're flowing here. And then she, her words were, she goes, it's time for you to get comfortable in it. So even when you were saying how uh, Dr. Um, Holmes, Reverend Holmes, I always want to call him Dr. <laughs> Pastor Derek Holmes. Um, and I think he'll be a doctor sooner than I, than I think. Um, uh, was saying that you you have a voice and you're like me, you know, it's interesting. I think that's that imposter syndrome as well that I've actually had to fight through. Like I am, I am somebody, I can do this. I'm not um, uh, being an imposter. This is who I am. This is what I've been called to do. And I think what you're sharing here, um, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that people need to understand who they are. Mm. And sometimes we get press because I believe God is trying to press us, press through us, our our true selves that we can no longer hide. And we want to keep going into this isolation piece, this isolation area. But I have this saying that isolation, you know, leads to darkness and it leads to secrets and it could lead to spiritual death if you keep yourself in that corner. And, And I just thank you for this article. And I can't wait for you all to read it. Um, it's going to be in the upcoming special edition of Ready Publication, uh, Ready to Vote issue, People, Politics, and Our Democracy. Um, please get your hands on that. But I want y'all to hear from Dr. Ferguson. Give us, I know you have a book. I know you are pastoring. I know you're doing consulting. You're doing all types of amazing things. And I want people to know how to reach you, your social media handles. Please repeat those a couple of times. And again, y'all, if y'all are driving, the, if you go to the description of the podcast, it will be in there as well. But can you share that with the listeners today? Okay, so um, let's let's start from the top. I published my first book a while ago, um, Led to the Stream. Um, it was a very personal 
very personal space, um, really talking about dealing with the valley very differently. So you can go Amazon, different places to get the book. Um, it's been very useful for a lot of people. Um, since I'm on here, I owe you, I owe you something. Actually, you don't even realize it. I've been trying for two years to write again. <laughs> for two years, I've been trying to write again. I got about eight different projects I've tried to start, but something has recently happened. And because I'm on here, I am, I am by saying this, I am holding myself to it accountable that's it <laughs> okay so i just started and when i say started i literally just like started sketching it out um it's going to be kind of a it's going to be a resource kind of thing based out of my near 25 years of ministry and it's going to be titled ministry a reality oh i it love is, that it's not a it's not going to be a real kind of long thing it's more in the in the um flow of a book that that i liked um and that um i believe pastors should get called the pastor of spirituality it kind of deals with pastoring from a real place but it's kind of along those lines i want to really give something to people that they can hold on to and deal with some of the very simple realities that come with ministry and ministry is not limited to yeah. preaching the gospel. So it's for everybody. And I love that. We just started. So I'm holding myself to it. So prayerfully, I will get through that as soon as necessary. My handles, Facebook, um, my regular page, Charles W. Ferguson, my business page, Dr. Charles W. Ferguson, um, Instagram, Rev Precious 78. That was my that was my nickname when I played football at Columbus East High School, home of the Tigers. Yes, Tiger Nation stand up. So the, greatest, the greatest high school in the world. Facts. Uh, I'm so, getting that, that's Rev Pressure 78, 78. on Instagram. Yes, on okay. Instagram. Um, and as was said before, my website, drcharleswferguson.org. You can see all of my different... Um, um, post my blog post things like that um, I got some deep stuff I got some funny stuff I got some stuff that you know if it makes you say why did Rev say it like that don't 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 do that to yourself just read it it's it's, it's gonna bless your life um, and I and of course pastor of Clare United Methodist Church on the south side of Columbus I don't care what anybody tell you about the south side south side is just fine Southside Columbus, uh, 293 East Barthman Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43207. We have worship in person at 10 a.m. every Sunday. And yes, we get it in. I know you heard United Methodist. No, we ain't them. We are we are as black as can be. So you <laughs> so you can be in the be in the building. Um, we're online, Claire UMC. Dot com. Um, if you're on Facebook and you want to catch our worship experiences, Claire UMC Online Church is the page for all of our content, all of our video content, all of our streaming content. We stream live every Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, and Claire C is Claire C L A I R E C L A I R C L A I R U M C. Yes. Okay. So all this, I'm, I'm in a lot of stuff. And before I forget, um, have to give a shout out to a ministry that has been birthed here and is in a partnership and they have made me CEO of it. Um, Ambassadors for Wholeness um, is a partnership that is dealing with um, um, being advocates for those with mental emotional health issues, um, oh, wow. trying to do all kinds of different things in that area. We have literally come in partnership and come together. Um, and we're doing some things right now. Um, and I'm grateful for the partnership. And there's many things that'll be coming from that as well. So yeah, your boy's busy. And I love it. So God be praised. And there's more things that are going to be coming, but that's what's happening now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I am just so grateful that you decided to be a guest on 
the News in Motion podcast. We have the broadcast, which is Monday through Thursday, but then the podcast falls on Friday. Um, and I'm just so thankful. Again, your article for this issue of Ready Publication is outstanding. And I want everyone, if they just get the copy just to read your article, that's fine with me because that, that's how powerful your article is. Um, just thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you're doing, not just only in Columbus, Ohio, but around the country. Um, for those of you who are tuning in from outside of Ohio or outside of Columbus, and if you're in the area at all, be sure to check out, if you're here on Sunday morning, be sure to check out his church. Um, again, he's giving you all the information that will also be in the description. Um, and then check him out. See if you can like meet up with him for coffee. Um, I'm sure if he has time that's not taken away from his family, um, he will be sure to um, see what he could do. Also connect with him on his social media handles as well. Again, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. This is season four of the News in Motion podcast. I am your host, Gail Dudley. You know where you can find me. You can find me Monday through Thursday on News in Motion Live at 7.25 a.m. You can find that either on Facebook, which is facebook.com backslash news in motion. Please go and like and follow that page. You can also find it on my YouTube. Y'all be sure to subscribe. It is youtube.com backslash Gail Dudley. And you can also find it on my personal LinkedIn, which is linkedin.com backslash Gail E. Dudley. So go, go ahead, check us out. Y'all know y'all can find me on Instagram at, at Gail Dudley, G-A-I-L-D-U-D-L-E-Y, Twitter, the same handle. And my personal Facebook page, well, I'm not even handling that much anymore. It's basically on my News in Motion page. And then y'all, the website, www.gaildudley.com. Please go there, check out the merch that we have there. We have uh, So Ready Vote t-shirts, Be Ready Vote t-shirts. We have also Plain Vote t-shirts. We have News and Motion t-shirts. We have Vote mugs, coffee mugs, you name it. We have it there. I believe that the more we put, you know, if we're at our office and we have a vote cup and people may, it may remind them to vote. It may remind them to register to vote. It's about seeing things. There are studies that are conducted that says such. Also, y'all, we're beefing up our advocacy. Um, if you have $1, $3, $5, please go ahead and cash app us. This isn't to, to line my pocket. It is to help us get out here and do voter education and things like that. My cash app is the dollar sign, Emmons and Mary, I, Emmons and Mary today. You can check that out there. Um, all the information will be in the description. Again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Again, Dr. Ferguson, thank you for joining me today. Do you have any last parting words before we sign off? Get the magazine. Get it. Get it. Stop playing. Stop playing. Get it. It ain't about reading my article. Get it for all that's in there. Get it. Get it. Get it. And if there's nothing else that is said to you today, if there's nothing else that's said to you today, you are absolutely necessary. You are absolutely important. And your presence is absolutely necessary for the liberation of others. So be blessed today and walk in that fearlessly. Love it. And everyone, we're out until next Friday. Catch Gail each weekday on News in Motion on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash news in motion or her YouTube at youtube.com slash Gail Dudley. You can also follow Gail on Instagram and Twitter at Gail Dudley and visit her website www.gaildudley.com. Until next week, as Gail always signs off, stay well and remember to make some moves.